Howdy chooms, welcome to Deconstructing the Game, I'm Ryan. After playing the 1.5 patch and the following hotfix, I had a few things to chip in about this for the PC version. Now the most noticeable thing when you fire up your game and go into your options are the new graphics settings. DLSS has been updated to the most recent version, and AMD's FSR has replaced Fidelity FX. Now I'm going to have probably more to say about these after I test it a little more, but in my experience, although FSR gave me a little bit more performance gain at each setting compared to DLSS, I personally found the grain and stair stepping fairly unacceptable. This is the quality mode, and you can see on the top of my gauge cluster and on wires as I go past, it looks pretty bad. But I'm definitely going to tweak with it more, and I really like having more options available. Even though this was billed as the next gen console update, it has quite a few changes that allow you to tweak your performance and visual quality more on PC as well. Again, more testing required, but especially with graphics cards still being in short supply, I think a lot of people are going to appreciate a few more options to gain a little bit more performance. A pet peeve of mine visually with this game that has remained until this patch was the lack of physics interactions with objects in the world. Now, there's always been a little bit like these plastic furniture that you could blow apart and things like power poles would fall over when shot, but other objects just didn't do anything when shot or blown up. Now, it was even more frustrating because with only a little light game deconstruction, you could see that other stuff had originally been reactive, but that they disabled all of this in order to get a little performance back. I'm very pleased to report that now most objects in the game react when shot, blown up, hit with a car, etc. I just want to say, as a child of the 90s, I grew up in an era of films like Waterworld, where when shit blows up, debris, objects, stuntmen, stuff goes flying through the air. And I've brought that expectation to video games with me. And since most game developers are about my age these days, it's, you know, been pretty safe that I didn't have to be disappointed by that in games. Cyberpunk was a rare outlier where when you shoot up an entire city block, maybe two or three things fall over afterwards, and it's really disappointing. I have to say that for me personally, the addition of stuff flying through the air, blowing into pieces and falling over, is probably one of the smallest changes that they could have made to the game that brings me the most happiness, and is honestly just an expectation for modern games these days. I mean, look at this. Stuff that blew up before blows up even better. That is satisfying destruction, and that is what I honestly expect in any game that bills itself as AAA these days. So, yeah, I know a lot of this stuff is kind of just bringing the game up to where people felt it should have been, and people have different expectations for what should have been added in this patch, but for me personally, it about ruins a game where you shoot guns and blow things up when stuff does not go flying through the air. Like a lot of video game physics systems, it has some glitches and bugs here and there and doesn't always look perfectly realistic. But compared to what we had two weeks ago, I feel like this is definitely on par with most video games these days. And most importantly, it's no longer a distraction that'll pull you out of gameplay because it's just unrealistic how little things used to react to being shot and blown up. A problem that Cyberpunk 2077 is notorious for is the problems the engine has with streaming and calling of assets, or when stuff pops in and out of view at the edges of the screen or in the distance. It's even been compared unfavorably to some of the PS2 Grand Theft Auto games. Now, before I get into detail, I just want to say and demonstrate that it's much, much better at the most important time, which is when you're driving around. It's no longer as distracting to where things are popping up right next to you, like light posts and signs. Let's take a look at the exact same area where I tested this in 1.3 and it looked really bad, and you'll notice only that one building in the distance is the only large object that pops in. The light posts, the power lines, everything else is totally visible in the distance, even the van transitioned correctly from its low detail model out of sight before it came into my sight and drove down the hill. Now naysayers might jump on that two second clip of that building popping in, make a gif of it, put it on reddit, say cyberpunk's still broken, which is why I wanted to say first how much I think it's improved overall. That's a rare case and this specific location is the place where I found it looks the worst and now it's just that one building that pops up. So yes, it's still not perfect, but I feel it's much improved to the point where I consider it very playable and not a distraction anymore. After Mike's experiences with the 1.5 patch, I was curious if CDPR had cherry picked any of the things I'd covered in a video and it didn't take long. They deleted Crazy Bob. 
this is the spot where he spawns and I even checked all along his route, apparently they decided it was easier to just remove him rather than figuring out what was wrong with his AI. So let's have a moment of mourning for Crazy Bob. And it wasn't just Bob either, they slightly moved or changed every one of the static NPCs that I pointed out in my video, including Phone Guy, who still stands there all day and night talking on his phone, he just does it back here a little more out of sight instead of in front of his trailer. Now I have to say, it really does kind of feel like they're cherry picking us here and spending way too much time fixing the little things we point out in our videos. I, uh, I don't know, it's either they're sending us valentines or they genuinely hate us. I'm sticking with option two as I've said all along, but it's definitely a little weird making a video about something and specifically just pointing out some things you're kind of joking about and then feeling like the developer has their magnifying glass on you and changes those specific things. So yeah, hey, CDPR, if you want to talk to us, you know, in a normal way, Hey, if you guys want to do a Badlands expansion, I would love to voice my own character. I would probably do it for free. You know, there, there are totally normal ways to open up communication with us, and uh, we would even probably contribute a bunch of our testing if you want, but hey, you know, don't be creepers. But while I'm on this topic, there are a bunch of changes to the AI, and since it's something I've focused on in the past that I'm interested in, I might want to do a follow-up video on it, because a, a lot of it is more convincing. Like, for example, these duplicate NPCs are it seems to be working correctly now. So if they are taking a positive from the stuff that I'm testing and turning it into something that functions better in the game, that definitely pleases me a lot. So, you know, not being glib, I'm glad to see that maybe some of the stuff we're working on is creating a positive effect in the game. Overall, I'm really happy with the changes brought by 1.5. They've definitely focused a lot on bringing the immersion and realism of the world up to snuff, but for me that's really important. I'm someone that really likes to get lost in the world of the games that I play, and this is a game I've become attached to. I really like this world, even with its flaws, and making it really feel more realistic, adding depth to interactions and things like that. I feel this was a really important baseline to create before they move on and start creating more content. Now, people's opinions are gonna vary on that, but even though some would say this is just bringing it up to an acceptable state where you can get into its world and enjoy it, my feeling is that that has to come first before anything else. So regardless of how long it's taken, I'm pretty happy with the state the game is in right now, though like everyone else, I would love to see some substantive content DLCs. Elden Ring comes out this week, and we're definitely going to be dividing our attention between both games, but look for more cyberpunk content in the future. Thank you for watching Deconstructing the Game.